Hi folks, this is Jamie Moles um, from Technical Marketing here, recording the threat hunting and network traffic presentation that I delivered uh, at uh, RSA conference this year. So um, what is the, the, the things that we're going to go through in this presentation are um, the state of the game. What is the current state of the game in threat hunting today? What most people are doing in threat hunting? Um, what, what are we actually looking for? Uh, in threat hunting, especially in network, and what are the problems associated with this. I'm, I'm going to dive a little bit into the the idea of hunting, threat hunting in packets, and why that why it's a tough game to play. What are the issues associated with it? We're going to talk a little bit about advanced threat hunting and why you should automate the process and let NDR do it for you. So let's get started. Um, how is threat hunting done today? Well, realistically. Um, if you speak to anybody in incident response, most threat hunting done nowadays is done in two places. Um, it's done on the endpoint and it's done in logs. Um, I, I make a point here in the first section that endpoint analysis, endpoint threat hunting is a, a solved problem. We know how to do that. There are many, many open source tools and books published on the subject. And it's basically based on endpoint forensics technology. So using tools like volatility for memory dump analysis, sleuth kit for file system analysis, malware analysis tools uh, and, and services like Joe Sandbox or, or the old FireEye, <coughs> the old FireEye Sandbox or the old last line um, Sandbox, uh, manual analysis, of Windows registry, uh, things like that. And there's an extensive use of threat intel as a source of information on what to actually look for. Um, log analysis is and, or, and has been for quite some time quite popular uh, because it's an easier way of threat hunting uh, in networks than looking at packets. And typically people are going to be analyzing firewall and proxy logs, um, looking for known threat indicators, known IOCs. Um, so you're going to be looking at things like DNS requests, HTTP requests, TLS SNI uh, analysis. Um, you're getting data from firewalls and proxies and looking at their logs as well. And in my mind, this isn't really hunting. It's more like doing signature matching on known threats. You can literally just pull down a whole bunch of uh, IOCs or threat intel and just done a, do a string-based search across these logs to see if you get any hits. Um, that's not really threat hunting. And this is mostly done on the perimeter, hence the firewall and proxy uh, side of things, due to scaling issues. Um, if you can limit your network analysis to a, a choke point in the network, such as the proxy or the firewall, um, it gives you less to analyze and it's an easier job to do. What are the hardcore instant response experts doing? The people like Mandiant, the people who get called in to the big breaches. Um, what are they doing? Um, well, the first thing guys like that tend to do is deploy packet capture sensors into the assumed to be compromised network. And they're doing hypothetical analysis of data. What that means is, um, all of the information on the previous things, the threat intel that goes into endpoint analysis and log analysis, these are the guys who are creating that information. So they're going into a environment where they don't have any threat intel or IOCs to work with. They have to find them themselves. Um, this type of hunting is done inside the network perimeter. Um, and it, 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 they're targeting reconnaissance, lateral movement, and service exploitation in particular, because they're the things that are probably the easiest to find in the network and they're going to be the quickest indicator of a bad guy being present. Um, this requires significant expertise and time and access to systems to be successful, which is why most people are not doing it. it it's a hard job to do. And that's the way things are today. Um, if we are going to do threat hunting in the network, what should we be looking for? Well, Here's four protocols uh, uh, that are for you, protocols that span the perimeter and can be seen on the inside of the network as well. DNS, HTTP, SSL, TLS, and FTP for file transfers. There's a whole bunch of things that can be looked for within these protocols. DNS, you want to analyze the queries to help find DGA and C2 servers and data exfil over DNS. 
Um, HTTP monitoring will uh, reveal malicious URLs, malware distribution points, and suspicious data exfil activities. SSL TLS is a bit harder because it's encrypted, but you can do encrypted traffic analytics to inspect the traffic um, to like, find malware traffic, C2 comms, and data exfil. And FTP is used for file transfers. Looking for uh, monitoring FTP sessions can reveal unauthorized data access or data exfil attempts. On the right hand side, you can see some of the sample IOCs that you'll get from threat hunting that will typically um, help highlight these issues, like domains with high entropy, unusual user agent strings, um, unexpected increases in encrypted traffic volumes and bulk data transfers, etc. There's a number of things that you can look for on the perimeter to start network threat hunting. Um, there are other things, though, that you can do on the inside of the network and other protocols that can be trickier to analyze, but can bring quite interesting success and, and quite interesting uh, tactics for finding the bad guys. I'm going to go with one example, the, the protocol SMB. Um, SMB is a file and folder sharing protocol, also known as SIFS, Common Internet File uh, Standard, I think it is. Um, SMB in a Microsoft network in particular um, is also often used in lateral movement. So there's a couple of things that you would want to look for if you were analyzing SMB in a threat hunting context. The first thing is, is there any SMB version one usage in the network? You would hope not. It's a deprecated protocol. It's extremely vulnerable to exploitation. Um, and if it is running in a network, then you would want to get rid of that. Um, and this is a low hanging fruit. Get rid of that, take it out of your system and, and, and overnight increase the security posture of that network. Other things that you would want to look for would be abnormal file access patterns. Like for example, repeated access to files and directories that don't align with the normal operational profile of a specific system. That could signify that an, an attacker is attempting to perform reconnaissance to, to locate data uh, or search for exploitable content within the network file system. Um, anonymous login patterns is another thing. Frequent failed SMB logins or successful logins at unusual times from unusual locations can indicate brute force attempts. And, and this is especially <coughs> the case in Microsoft networks where typically ordinarily authorized and logged in users will be using single sign-on and we'll be getting access to systems that they're allowed to. So lots of failed SMB logons can be a very strong indicator of a threat actor working in the network. Um, sudden spikes in SMB traffic, um, not linked to regular business operations, could be due to data exfil, or it could be data staging, where the bad guys move chunks of data from one location to another so that they send it out from a single place. Obviously, you can look for things like ransomware signatures, such as file names or extensions associated with ransomware, like .wannacry, .locked, et cetera. And if you find that, then that's a pretty strong indication that you've got uh, something nasty going on. But also things like unusual SMB command usage. Um, certain SMB commands, and I mean this at the protocol level, this is not users entering commands in the keyboard, but this is the protocol and how it functions as itself. Commands like SMB com tree connect or SMB com write and X, um, which are used to connect to shared resources and write data. A lot of these um, commands appearing on the system um, could be misused, could be an indication of a, an attacker attempting to manipulate shared directories or files. Now, the problem is looking for this manually as a human being can be very, very difficult. The skills around this are, are high. Things like sudden spikes in SMB traffic, well, how are you ever going to know that? Um, this is not the kind of thing that's easy for a human being to analyze, but it's high value when it comes to finding bad actors in the network. Um, one of the other issues is hunting in packets is, uh, it's like, trying to hunt for fish coming over Niagara Falls. The scale of the problem is just enormous. And we're trying to work this out. I, I thought, well, what, how, how would I know what the scale is? Well, as, as, as an exercise, let's ask ChatGPT. So I said to ChatGPT, on a Windows local area network with 100,000 devices, 
He's using Ethernet adapters of one gigabit um, capacity. What would be the typical volume of traffic traversing the network in a 24 hour period? Um, we had some basic assumptions, which were an average utilization of 5% over that network adapter's capacity and continuous operation over 24 hours, which let's, let's face it, no device is running for that long. So it's not, not a great calculation, but it, it was interesting. And the calculation you can see on the right hand side there is composed of several parts, maximum bandwidth per device, average bandwidth per device at 5% utilization, total bandwidth for 100,000 devices, total data in 24 hours. And the total volume comes out at 54,000 terabits, or 54 petabytes, I believe, terabytes, petabytes, over a 24 hour period. Um, divide that by three, and let's say you work with um, an eight hour period instead. This is still an enormous amount of traffic to process. You could not reasonably expect human beings to process that kind of data and find bad guys. Not realistically. Um, you couldn't run a Wireshark, for example, capture that data and expect to analyze it. It is an absolute nightmare. So how are you supposed to do this? Um, I mean, what, what do the tools look like when it comes to hunting in packets? Well, on the left-hand side of the screen here, you can see what it looks like when I'm analyzing some HTTP traffic in Wireshark. Um, and on the right-hand side, you can see just some of the books that I have sitting on my desk that uh, I've used over the years to do uh, this kind of work. The Wireshark Network Analysis book, uh, for example, is about three inches thick, but it's the absolute Bible when it comes to learning how to analyze network traffic. Um, I've said time and time again to people who asked about this, this is my tagline at the top here, threat hunting in the network is like playing hide and seek, but you don't know for certain there's even someone hiding to find. And that's what threat hunting in network traffic is like. It's a job that you you want to do, you need to do, um, but you're not necessarily guaranteed success. Um, what are the advanced guys doing nowadays? Well, advanced threat hunting goes way beyond threat intel and IOCs. And there's a number of facets on this. So um, the guys like Mandiant will be doing a lot of hypothesis-driven investigation. Investigations based on very light knowledge, if any, of a new threat, um, often brought in on extremely short notice um, and dealing with a high profile threat. This is reliant on investigators discovering artifacts themselves based on the likely behaviors and TTPs of threat actors. Um, so it really is you starting from scratch to develop and find the threat and, and document it and determine what the IOCs are so they can be passed on to others. Um, there are tools that can be used to make this easier. Advanced behavioral analytics, as an example. Um, investigations based on mass data analysis and correlation um, to identify threats that can be detected, detected with definable behaviors. So for example, ransomware file share encryption you could detect by monitoring SMB traffic for, first of all, spikes in traffic, but second of all, mass file reading and writing. That is, that's a behavior I can look for, mass file reading and writing from a device that never normally does that. Behavioral analytics is very fast and very good at detecting this kind of thing. It's not the only tool in the box though. Machine learning uh, uh, as, as a investigative tool is very, very nice. Um, this tends to be investigations based on, based on mass visibility and monitoring of devices at a scale that allows for highly nuanced discovery of anomalies that would otherwise be impossible to spot. You're really talking about spotting a needle in a haystack here. Machine learning is very, very good at that. And there's a, a, a particular model called predictive analysis, which works here. And the idea behind predictive analysis is if we know what a device does in the past, we have a reasonable chance of predicting what it will do in the future. And any divergence from this behavior is interesting. It's an anomaly and it's worth investigating. Um, <clears throat> however, it's hard. Um, you wouldn't want to go and download Brozeek, uh, for example, and try and build your own behavioral analytics system and your own machine learning systems to do this. So don't.
um, you want to automate the process, let us do it for you. Let the existing tools that are available on the market do the work for you while you get on and do your real job. Um, let NDR do the hard work whilst you get on with more interesting things, shall we say. A good NDR solution will pick up the threat. Um, it will show automated attack chain discovery and correlation. So it will show you the full attack and the various parts of it that were involved, giving you an idea of how the bad guys got in, all the systems they touched, any files or accounts that they compromised so you know exactly what's going on. And one of the things that uh, a good NDR system such as VLX is particularly good at is solving the lateral movement problem and providing the evidence of it, which we do because we decrypt Microsoft protocols within the network, which none of the other vendors in the NDR space. The screenshot you can see there that says remote service launch attempt to run a lolbass. What we're seeing there is the offending machine, WebDruplo1, using the MSRPC protocol to launch on workstation physician 03 using PowerShell, that PowerShell script. So that runs on the remote machine. That's lateral movement. That PowerShell script, when you decrypt it and run it, uh, it's actually the Metasploit uh, Trojan. Don't uh, If you want to go into um, the threat hunting in the network business, it's an interesting thing to do, but it takes up a lot of time and expertise, and um, customers generally have their day job to do. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend building this yourself when there are vendors such as us that have solved the problem and already know how to do it for you and will maintain and carry on that capability going forward. Um, you want to know a little bit more about Extra Hop? Uh, Gartner Peer Insights, you can see what our customers have said about uh, using Extra Hop. And you can see uh, one of our customers, Home Depot. Extra Hop provides insight that is critical to delivering a seamless and secure experience for our customers and associates. Thank you very much for watching. Um, that was me showing you how to do threat hunting in the network.